I'm Dr. Julie Elner. You're watching Chapter 6 of my bariatric surgery video. We'll just pick up where we left off in Chapter 5. So let's compare the bypass to the sleeve. The sleeve is the newest operations. Improvements have definitely been made. It's considered a safe and very appropriate surgery. It does have less weight loss statistically than the gastric bypass and less medical problems go away, but it's still a very good operation and it is gaining popularity. It's important during a consultation with your surgeon to talk to them honestly about your medical problems, what you need out of a surgery, what you want out of a surgery so you can decide with your surgeon which operation is really going to be the best fit for you. So what's the mortality rate after these surgeries? This is something that has declined rapidly through the past couple of years. The gastric bypass and the sleeve are thought to have about the same mortality rate, which nationally is about one in 1,000 patients who has a sleeve or a bypass in this country dies. Now, as of the time of this taping, I've been doing this kind of surgery for almost 20 years and I've never had a patient death. But that's not due to anything magic that I'm doing in the operating room. It's really largely due to great nursing care that I have at all the hospitals that I work at, but also it's due to the education of my patients. It's due to the motivation of my patients. By the time my patients come to surgery, they know exactly what they need to do to be successful, but also to be safe. So your safety, just like your success, really falls down to you following the program. Gastric banding has quite a variation in the mortality rate. And you'll see there, it's anywhere between one in 500 to one in 2000 because of the variation in the training of surgeons. A fully trained bariatric surgeon who offers all of the available operations and not just a band and who operates in a full bariatric program is statistically expected to have much better outcomes than a lap band center. Beware of lap band centers that only have one operation to offer you. They're frequently not staffed by the best trained surgeons. There are complications you can have from any surgery. If you have your gallbladder out or your appendix or your tubes tied, you can have incisions get infected, you can get pneumonia, you can get a deep vein thrombosis. That's a clot that forms in the legs due to not walking around enough. If a piece of that clot flicks off through the bloodstream and lands in the lungs, it's called a pulmonary embolism and that can be fatal. If you get a pulmonary embolism, you're lucky to live through it. So the idea is avoid it in the first place. And the reason that my patients don't tend to get clots is because they know exactly what they need to do in terms of their walking program to keep the, the circulation going in their legs so they don't get a clot. At this time of this taping, the most common cause of death in this country after bariatric surgery is actually getting a clot and it comes from people not walking around and getting enough exercise. You can also get a bowel or, or stomach obstruction, even from scar tissue or from a bowel twist. That can happen with any number of surgeries, but all complications are extremely rare these days after these operations. So what is the weight loss? The national statistics are what you're looking at on your slide. The national average with a gastric bypass is for people to lose about 75% of their excess weight, and it's a little bit less with the sleeve, and it's a little bit less than that with the band, but patients who are committed to doing their aftercare and who follow up with their surgeon, certainly in my program, do better than the national average. This is Bob and Sandy. They're the aunts and uncle of Autumn who had the two babies and wanted the third but was infertile. Well, this is a picture of Bob and Sandy about 10 years before they actually had surgery with me. And this isn't Bob and Sandy at their biggest because they didn't have pictures of them at their biggest because they didn't want to be in front of the camera. But here they are 10 years before their surgeries. Here they are after their surgery and this is the way they are in real life. They're like a couple of teenagers. They're very active. Their home life has changed. Their work life has changed. Their retirement has changed. They're really embracing life. They're more than happy to talk to you. If you want to reach out to them through the website, you can drop an email to them. 
they're more than happy to chat with you about their experience as a couple with both of them having bariatric surgery. This is Rose on the right-hand side of this slide. Um, she's uh, one of my patients from here in San Diego. She would also be happy to chat with you about her experience with her weight loss. In terms of recovery, people are usually pretty surprised at how good they feel after this kind of surgery. The band patients are in and out the same day. The bypass patients and the sleeve patients are staying in the hospital up to 48 hours or so. But the way that people describe their pain after surgery is that it feels like you did a lot of sit-ups. It feels like muscle soreness. You don't feel your internal organs at all. What you feel is muscle soreness, like you did a lot of sit-ups at the gym. That's how my patients describe it. At least 50% of my patients, when they leave the hospital, they don't even take their narcotic prescription that they have. They get by on just plain Tylenol. This is an interesting slide. It demonstrates a research study that came out of Michigan showing how much money people spend in association with their obesity. It's over $18,000 a year that a person spends in costs associated with their obesity. And this really comes into play when someone is looking at an insurance policy that doesn't cover bariatric surgery. And they're thinking, gosh, I'm gonna have to pay cash for my surgery. Imagine how quickly you're going to recover that money. And my patients who do have to pay cash say they typically resave the money within a year and a half to two years afterwards. So points to remember. There really are very variable success and complication rates between programs, between surgeons. You really need to do your research when it comes to researching who you're going to go to and where you're going to go for your surgery. I recommend that you talk to patients of a surgeon that you're looking into, interview different surgeons. You need to feel an appropriate chemistry between you and your surgeon because this is a major life change and it affects every aspect of your life. And you need to feel comfortable talking to your surgeon about your family life, your work stressors, behavioral eating, all that stuff that doesn't normally come up in a regular doctor's office visit. So you need to be sure that you're really comfortable with the technical expertise of your surgeon, but you need to really feel comfortable with your surgeon as a person. The biggest determinant of success is not just the type of surgery that you choose. In the long term, it's you and your surgeon's commitment to taking care of you in the long term. My patients unfortunately come to me in their first consultation being caregivers for other people. They're taking care of their kids, they're taking care of their boss, they're taking care of their spouse. They may be taking care of an elderly parent, but they aren't taking time to take care of themselves. That's a shift that has to happen. We have to shift those priorities and I need to help my patients have better balance so they can take time to take care of themselves in their lives. Then you're better able to take care of everyone else when you're healthy. In the first meeting, with my patients. I sit down for an hour to an hour and a half with each of my patients. And if they're from out of town, I have a consultation over the phone. We go through the details of your medical history, the surgeries that you've had, the weight loss experiences that you've had and any medical problems that you might have. You can ask questions, discussing your specific needs, ask questions about the different types of surgery. We do welcome spouse or a best friend to come to that visit, it never hurts to have an extra set of eyes and ears in the office. And we need to have a conversation about which operation really matches what you need out of a surgery. And if you want to at that point, you can move ahead with a to-do list for surgery. We will call your insurance ahead of time to make sure that we know what your insurance requires of you in order to authorize you to have surgery. And I'll walk you through the insurance requirements as well as the medical testing that you need in order to prepare yourself for surgery. Let's look at a few before and after pictures of some of my patients. This is Scott and Donna. And what you might uh, no, if you know Scott or if you chat with Scott or Donna, is that typically what happens is the man makes the woman go first. And that's typically what happens. That's what happened with Scott and Donna. He made her go first. And about a year after 
uh, her surgery, he came forward and said, yes, I want to have the surgery as well. Typically, men are not the braver sex when it comes to having this kind of surgery. And this is a picture of Scott and Donna after their surgery. And it always reminds me of something. People ask me all the time, am I going to be able to eat normally? Am I going to be able to enjoy desserts, a special birthday cake? Am I going to be able to enjoy special celebrations? Am I going to be able to eat normally if I go to a dinner party or a restaurant? Am I going to look normal after this surgery? Scott and Donna are more than happy to talk to you about their experience, as are most of my patients. But Scott and Donna actually bought a cheesecake company and they have a, um, a catering company where they cater all different kinds of cheesecakes and they have to do quality control taste testing on their cheesecakes and they can cater events and they can taste their cheesecakes and they do just fine after having bariatric surgery. This is Ashley. Ashley is one of my patients who after surgery took up running and Ashley also took up a husband. This is Ashley in her wedding dress at her wedding. She got married about a year after her gastric bypass surgery and she was absolutely gorgeous as a bride. This is Christine. Christine is my support group leader right now. Christine runs our support group here in San Diego. This is Christine before her gastric bypass surgery. You might recognize Christine from the same picture. She's the brunette bombshell standing next to the bride. So if you compare the before pictures of Christine to the after pictures of Christine, she's almost unrecognizable. You should definitely take a look at Christine's videos on my website. She's taken up a number of exciting hobbies, not the least of which is skydiving, and she has all kinds of amazing videos on my website. She's also more than happy to talk to you if you want to talk to her about what it's like after surgery. This is John. John's one of my patients who's also more than happy to chat with you after surgery, and he has regained his athleticism. He loves to hike, and he's actually enjoying being in competition against his young son in terms of athletic abilities. If you have someone in your family or in your maybe friends circle who is discouraging you from having surgery, saying that they're worried about you because it's scary to have surgery and they want you to just diet and they're saying, I'll just diet along with you, I'll do it with you, I'll be your pal and I love you no matter what size you are. God bless those people for loving us unconditionally. We all need people in our lives who will love us unconditionally. But probably what they don't realize as you realize now from watching this series of lectures, is that obesity is a disease that will eventually kill you. And most people don't realize that. They don't realize that it's a terminal disease. And right now, if you have a body mass index of 40 or more, you're almost 10 times more likely to die within the next five years without the surgery than with it because obesity kills far more people in this country than the surgery does. The surgery is so safe now. As I said earlier, it's safer than getting your gallbladder out. So the risk of the disease is far higher than the risk of the surgery. And share that statistic with them. Share with them that you have a disease that's going to eventually kill you and dieting really doesn't work for people who are trying to lose 80 or 90 or more pounds. But the nicest side effect is just to live life in a normal size body outside of the health benefits, just to be able to go anywhere and buy clothes and to feel confident. There's no putting a price on that. If you would like to have a consultation with me, the next step is to print off the starter form from the website at elnerbariatric.com. It's a typical health history questionnaire. Print it off and fax it to the number on the screen. The fax number is also on the first page of the form. Or you can call us up. We're more than happy to answer questions from people who just have general questions. We take calls from people all over the country and indeed I have patients all over the world. 
So congratulations on taking your first step toward learning more about this operation. And if I chat with you in the near future, welcome to Elner Bariatric.